I'm Nick Brown. I work at uh, Neil Street Productions in London. Uh, I'm director of film and television along with uh, my colleague Pippa Harris. So Neil Street is an interesting production company. It's small, um, but um, quite unique in that it does film, theatre and TV. Um, it was originally founded about 10 years, just over 10 years ago, um, by Sam Mendes, Pippa Harris and Cara Newling, really to focus on film and theatre, um, and particularly the work that Sam was doing in that area. So for many years, they were very successful um, in both those things and, and did shows like Jarhead and Revolutionary Road and Away We Go and uh, um, and then three years ago uh, a series called Call the Midwife happened and that has um, turned the company into a, a three-dimensional company if you like with, with the television side now becoming more and more important. I must have been mad. I could have been an air hostess. I could have been a model. I could have moved to Paris or been a concert pianist. Call the Midwife is a um, incredibly well-written, terrifically performed, wonderfully produced show. Um, I think that um, it was a surprise hit for many people. Um, and I think that, I think there are a number of reasons why it seems to have such broad appeal. It certainly, um, has become a show that seems to work for families. It seems to be something that people can sit down and watch with their children. And kids, and I can speak from personal experience, kids are very engaged with it. Sister Bernadette used to do this in seconds. Oh, it takes me forever. I think it's, its origins in uh, memoirs and a sort of semi-documentary feel. And in fact, the first director, Philippa Lothorpe, who kicked the series off, she has a strong documentary background. I think a sense that this is actually documenting a time that really did exist in a very truthful way, an accurate way, and the, and the way in which um, it's uh, produced, uh, the attention to detail, um, uh, the way that Heidi Thomas writes it, what you see on, you know, in terms of props and sets and everything else is incredibly carefully researched and, and, and done. I think that veracity and truthfulness is important. You do realise we'll be coming to inspect your marital quarters soon, chummy, making sure they're suitable for home delivery and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> there is something about babies being born, life and death, that is gets to the very kind of soul and core of, of who we are and what we are. It's something that we've all experienced in some way or other, whether we remember it or not. Um, it's also an interesting show because it's primarily about women and it's women and women's relationships to other women. And that's quite rare on television. Um, and um, I think that together with um, a sense that people are doing something that they love for vocational reasons, that they they have a calling, whether it's, there's obviously the religious elements to it, um, but a calling to care for people um, and look after people, and that in itself is enough. And that's, again, it, it, something that you don't see that much on television, um, and I think people really, really respond to. Go on and say it. I'm dying, isn't I? You've got diabetes. I'm here to test your pee. But I'm on the way out. You are no nearer dying than I am. Now I want you to take this and fill it up. The arrival of TV series into the, the work that the company does has obviously meant there is just more to do because they are very labour intensive, those kind of things. Um, but I think the company is interested in doing interesting, exciting projects in whatever field they happen to crop up in and working with talent across all of those different areas and, and quite often there's there's interesting crossovers there's talent who you meet doing one thing who wants to do something else um, and there's a transference of ideas or projects from from one of those uh, areas from theatre to film or you know film tv to film or whatever it is so um, it's exciting to feel that there are no no limits in that sense on what we can do in terms of the breadth 
um, and we just try to ensure that the bar is very high and we don't do very much and what we do we try to do really really well. British drama is going through a really interesting time at the moment I think there's a lot of excitement I think there's a sense of potential and possibility and um, what can be achieved beyond just our borders. Um, that said there's also just fantastic examples of quite UK focused domestically kind of made shows that uh, are done really well um, whether it's you know Broadchurch or Happy Valley which are just fantastic examples of really high quality writing and performance. We will find the person responsible. Promise. Beyond that, you know, you begin to see some slightly more high concept ideas coming through and that's quite interesting and people thinking that they can begin to make shows that maybe um, certainly can work abroad or can maybe don't even have to have a UK broadcaster as their first port of call, potentially. Um, and that sort of internationalisation, not a very nice word, but that, that sense that audiences around the world are interested in great stories well told from wherever they come from seems to be increasing and that's a very exciting uh, development I think so um, I p personally I have a, a huge fondness and admiration for a show called In the Flesh um, which was actually on BBC Three which uh, only ran for two short series um, but was an entirely original and very clever and take on uh, the zombie genre. What are you? Something I'd never seen before um, which which kind of took um, started the story after the sort of the classic war between humans and zombies and asked what happened when that's over and the humans have won and how do you then deal with the aftermath uh, and it touched on all sorts of interesting ideas about belonging and difference and community and family um, and was a very thoughtful and clever and original piece so um, that's a particular favourite, but I, I, every time I see something like that coming through, um, you feel excited about the future of British television. We're living in a world where real monsters exist. They are not your neighbours, not your friends. They are imposters, changelings of the highest order. British drama and British series is is really thriving and, and it's not the case in many other countries, particularly in Europe. Obviously the US is somewhere that has always produced you know, a lot of drama and increasingly over the last few years really interesting and terrific stuff. But um, I think the UK, you know, we obviously like to think and I think there are, there's a lot of creativity and um, uh, great writers and we have a, a, a terrific writing tradition and some terrific actors and you know, we have a strong industry base but I think that there's been there's a few things that have obviously meant that the independent production sector in the UK in drama but also in other genres um, has really taken off in the last 10 years and um, there's a um, uh, there's the whole issue of ownership of IP um, and the fact that actually as an independent producer you essentially own your own IP um, and that means that you have the basis to actually build a business um, and not just hop from one project to the next earning some fees but something that is longer term where you can take more risks where you can invest um, and it, that's also of course attracted people to it um, and you know we've also had recently the introduction of a TV tax credit um, which sort of brings the UK into line with some of the other European countries but that's been a great you know, it's a, a boost to the whole ambition and scale of production in the UK. Um, in fact, the UK is overrun um, with work now. So, so you know, the challenge is to make sure that there are sufficient people to qualified, you know, excellent technical people uh, to actually support that um, expansion. Um, and I think that. A lot of the within the independent sector as well, there's, there's been a lot of consolidation um, the last few years and companies have been bought by bigger companies and so on. And, and that has allowed people to look further afield um, and develop links, you know, with, with their new companies. Their new companies tend to be um, much more international um, 
and and to think outside of the UK market. So there's a whole there's a number of different things that have all come together alongside what we hope would be the um, you know a kind of natural curiosity, creativity, uh, and talent base that exists there. Um, to mean that actually it's become a sort of um, it's given it a momentum, and the whole sector and the business has has um, is really on a roll at the moment.